Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello, welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and we are continuing on our local business 2020 series. Uh, we're looking at, at the vision for the future. Uh, again, we're heading into the next decade. 2020 has snuck up on us. I don't know how we got here already. Seems like we were just celebrating the millennium uh, not too long ago, but uh, here we are 20 years on and things have definitely developed on the online marketing world in the last uh, 20 years, but even every uh, since the start of 2019, things are changing as they always do. They change drastically. So I am interviewing some top di digital marketers from around the country and getting their opinion and having a discussion on what I think and we think the 2020 will be like for local businesses. So today I am talking with Adam Vest from Denver Digital. Uh, welcome to the show, Adam Vest. Hi, Neil. Uh, great to be with you again. Yes, we did talk a while ago and we've kept up our conversations over the last couple of years, I think, uh, just discussing what is uh, happening in the marketplace. Uh, before we get into all that detail, Adam, uh, give a 30 second introduction to yourself and your business there in Denver. Sure. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I own a company called Denver Digital. Um, we specialize in uh, local advertising, you know, advertising for local businesses. So um, search engine optimization, pay-per-click, social media advertising. Um, but I would say really our bread and butter is, is search engine optimization, uh, getting, getting small business owners found online. We Great, and that's what it's all about. There's all kinds of uh, businesses, of course, uh, but we want to concentrate on the local business because they, you know, do make up uh, a lot of the backbone of society. Putting pe putting people to work, uh, you know, and obviously giving the local area what they want. So, uh, briefly. Talk to me about exactly what local SEO is and how it differs from uh, just a regular SEO that other companies might want to implement. Sure. So, you know, we've been we've been in business now for uh, just over four years. And during that time period, you know, what is SEO? It, it, it continuously changes. Um, you know, Google kind of sets the sets the pace when it comes to their search engine, obviously. Um, and you know, Bing and others follow suit. Um, you know, the, I would say the biggest thing that differentiates local advertising versus, um, you know, more of a national uh, national advertising w w would really be the fact that, you know, location-based. Um, Google will use your location to determine uh, the best search results to, to to present to you. That's really Google's job is uh, what they want to do is they want to find they, they want to provide the best search results for whatever search it is that that a consumer might be making. So, if that's you know garage door repair near me or garage door repair eight hundred two two six or whatever the case, Google wants to show uh, the best possible options, and that's really what they've built their algorithm and their business in general on is, is providing the best results. And you can you can imagine. Um, if Google starts showing, you know, terrible websites that are not very easy to navigate, um, you know, one star rated companies, that's not really providing the best search results that they can. So they tend to favor companies uh, that do things at least online the right way. Uh, and what I, what I mean by that is creating user friendly websites, making sure that they have uh, very good reviews, responding to those reviews. And of course, you know, utilizing a lot of the different uh, apps or uh, programs that Google implements, you know, things like Go the Google Guarantee, which I'm sure we'll touch on here a little bit later on, or, um, you know, showing up in the Google Maps section or actually sharing content from the map section. Um, there's a lot of small things that, that local business owners can do uh, to really accelerate their marketing efforts locally. 
Right. Uh, and, you know, touching on a few things that you said there that I really want to highlight is, you know, it is all about location. And, you know, Google has put a tremendous amount of money over the years into uh, maps and mapping out, you know, the whole United States as well as the world. You see the Google cars driving around the cities all the time, uh, getting to exactly, um, you know, where every business is based on a geo uh, coordinate. And when you're talking about a local uh, ranking and, and local SEO, it is more about that location and the geo coordinates, I think, than anything else, because Google is really trying to pinpoint exactly what is at that address. And uh, they know exactly what's at that address. <laughs> you know, they can type it. They, you know, you type in your business name in Google and you're going to get a picture of what that storefront or whatever looks like. So Google, Google knows exactly where you are and uh, what you do. Uh, I think what you really have to do with uh, the SEO portion is, is prove everything to Google. Prove mm -hmm. everything that you're saying on your website is correct and back it up with the, the content that you have on your website. Absolutely. Um, and and one, of the, one of the new things that I've actually seen recently is, um, you know, a lot of times you could kind of hide your location using a, a VPN client. And even now with the VPN, Google still knows uh, <laughs> where where the general area that you're going to be searching and still provides those local searches, even if you're using a VPN that, that shows that your, your IP address is out of, uh, you know, Ohio, if you're here in Denver using that VPN, you're still going to see those local results. So I would agree. It's more important now than ever. Yeah. I mean, Google's probably smarter than you and I, uh, mm -hmm. Adam, and, uh, you know, SEOs sometimes find ways around things to get, uh, results, but they often get found out, which is why you really need to do uh, what Google says and best practices and uh, the white hat uh, marketing, which uh, it might be a familiar term uh, to some people rather than the black hat, which can get you in trouble. And when we're, we're looking at things like Google My Business, especially, it's become uh, the number one place for local businesses to get uh, phone calls especially and that's mostly what they want is for somebody to pick up the phone and uh, give them a call or book an appointment or get driving directions to the, their location so it's become that number one area and uh, you know let's talk about the actual search results page for a minute because uh, the opportunities for a local business to get on that first page of Google are getting less and less, it seems. Uh, you talked about the, the Google guarantee. Uh, now, you often see them for service-based businesses especially, uh, and those are the, the top three results that come up at the very top of the page, but you have to uh, pay uh, to even get put there, and then you have to pay for for the advertising as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Google Guarantee. Well, yeah, that's that's one of the big new changes. Um, I would say that that we've really the most obvious change that we've seen over the past you know twelve months is when when Google did decide to launch this guarantee program. Um, a, a lot of folks don't really know about the guarantee program. I think a lot of people. Uh, probably kind of assume that it's still similar to p what pay per click uh, is, but it, the Google Guarantee is a whole different, different, different program that Google's rolled out. Um, it's not, you know, they have not rolled it out for every industry. It's a handful of industries right now: um, garage doors, you know, repair and replacement being one of them, roofing being one of them, HVAC, so furnace repair, furnace replacement, air conditioners, things like that. Um, and it, it, it's a huge benefit to, I would say, both to uh, both to business owners and and customers. Um, and the reason being is is just like the name says, Google actually guarantees this program. So unlike a pay per click program, to where you know you're you're essentially just paying money for each click, Google will actually uh, stand behind the work that the folks are that are a part of that guaranteed program perform. So I can't. Right, I think it's up to two thousand dollars or something like that. 
Is it? Yeah, I know it's 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 gonna it changes frequently. Or it has changed a few times, and I'm sure it will continue to. But yeah, it is up to X amount of dollars. They guarantee that service. So, mm. like I said, and these are vetted companies as well. They really take a deep dive into the company to make sure it's a legitimate company. You have a business address. You've got all your papers in place. So you know they're making sure you're a legit company. Uh, do you know what the cost is for somebody to go through that and get uh, Google guaranteed? I'm not necessarily, I, I don't believe that there is a cost, um, but but it is a significant process. There might be now, uh, but I, I can tell you that the majority of our clients, uh, you know, anyone in those specific, those handful of industries um, are certainly at using this as, as one of their many advertising uh, platforms. But they do. They do a deep dive into each each uh, each company, each business. Um, they're looking, you know, f- to to make sure that the, the guys that are out there on your roof are are legitimate. Um, and then, as far as the advertising, you know, goes, it's it's not a pay per click situation. It's a pay per lead situation. So mm-hmm. uh, you can show up, you know, um, as 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 many times as you want. You can you, your ad, if you will, can be clicked as many times as you want. You don't actually get charged until uh, until you actually uh, receive that lead in your local business area in your local area. Uh, so they're really, if you think about it, they're really competing with uh, companies like Home Advisor, uh, you know, that do the same kind of lead uh, generation thing as well. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they're uh, Yelp and Home Advisor and Angie's List. This is direct competition to these bigger companies. Um, it just, it, it saves you a click, you know, instead of having to click into home advisor and then search that way, you can, um, you've got it right there on the front page with the Google guarantee. Right. So, you know, that's one place that you can get on the map and then they have just the regular paper click as well, uh, on the, on, on the search engine result page, which is your first page of Google when you're doing a search result. Um, so you've got the pay, paid page. Uh, advertising as well, the pay-per-click below the Google guaranteed. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've got to understand that this is how Google makes their money. They are an advertising platform. So it does push the other organic results right down the page. Yeah, it it sure does. Um, And that obviously directly impacts search engine optimization companies, for instance. But, um, you know, you're looking at three at least at this point, you're looking at three Google guaranteed results, um, you know, above the fold, which, you know, above the fold means without having to scroll, scroll down the page at all. And then you have two AdWords um, right below the Google guarantee. And then a lot of times you can end up with an ad actually within the map section as well. So, you know, that, that essentially puts Google with six ads before you ever get to the first local result. Um, and, and like you said, I mean, this is, this is how they make their money. So, uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't see this going anywhere. I don't see this changing. If anything, it's just going to continue to expand, I think. Right now there has been research done that, uh, a lot of people will kind of gloss over the ads and look for your first organic results. However, I've heard that that first ad within the three pack actually does a lot better than sometimes the the ads are, are above it because people are just so used to looking uh, straight to those three pack results in order to get the businesses that uh, they believe are organic yeah and i think by three pack you mean uh what's in the map section so the the three businesses there in the local three pack map section Yep, uh, called all different kinds of names, three pack, snack pack, uh, the local pack, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's known by all different kinds of names. But um, And that's a, that's a relatively new development is, is the ability to actually advertise in that three pack. Um, that, that, that has not been the case for a long time. And we've all kind of been waiting for it. We all expected it. But from a consumer standpoint, you're right. Uh, the majority of consumers are going are gonna to gloss right over the ads, mm-hmm. um, which is why Google spent a lot of time making the, this Google guarantee. It doesn't really look like an ad. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the green box that says ad next to it like the AdWords do. So some folks don't really know that the, the Google guarantee is actually advertisements as well. And then, yeah, they, they, they kind of snuck an ad into the map pack there. And 
Uh, I think a lot of consumers have always just kind of assumed if they're showing up in the map section, it's the business that's closest to me. Um, so, you know, they're, they're clicking or, or making the call directly using that map result. Um, and a lot of times at this point, not even realizing that you can now advertise in the map section. So. All right. Now, like we discussed, uh, there's a lot of emphasis being put on the maps and mapping out all these different businesses so that they can give uh, the best results. Obviously, if you're looking for a restaurant near me, and I think 82% of people uh, will uh, use the near me uh, when they're searching locally. So that whole near me phrase has become uh, really popular. Um, you know, I know when I'm out and about, and especially in a new city or area, uh, I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to you know, tell me where there is a restaurant uh, near me. So that's something that you want to be able to optimize for. <clears throat> but optimizing for the word near me is one thing, but you actually have to be close to the vicinity of the searcher especially if it's the case of a restaurant, you know, the best pizza, best uh, Chinese, best burger, whatever it might be. Um, but that's not necessarily what I'm looking for if I'm looking for uh, an attorney. I don't necessarily want to go to the, the one that's closest to me, uh, regardless of the reputation. So do you know how Google determines uh, what kind of results uh, they are going to show uh, depending on the kind of search. Sure. So, you know, the near me, you're right, that, that's a huge search uh, term. Um, and, and it kind of speaks to the importance of making, as a business owner, it's important to make sure that your Google My Business listing uh, is not just up to date, but uh, you're actually utilizing the entire Google My Business platform. Um, you know, doing things, you know, first and foremost, you have to make sure that uh, the zip codes and the cities that you actually do business in are, are, are uh, addressed in Google My Business. So Google knows who to show. They know when, when, when to allow you to show up in the Google uh, Maps section. Um, so Google's pulling from this information based on the, the profile of your Google My Business. Um, some things that, you know, uh, small business owners can do first and foremost, make sure that the, uh, Google, my business, uh, you know, actual listing is, is, is updated, has the correct zip codes, the correct cities. Um, and that changes frequently. I think there was just a change about two weeks ago to where Google kind of pushed out a whole new way, uh, of tracking folks, uh, as far as, you know, knowing when to show the, the right businesses, um, based on location. So, uh, it kind of, uh, set everyone back that, that hasn't, that, that doesn't stay on top of it. It's something that you consistently want to be checking in with. You want to share articles from Google, my business. So that's, that's kind of a missed opportunity that I see a lot of business owners make is they're not, you know, they, they might write a great piece, a great blog, a great, piece of content and then you know they'll share it on on facebook or instagram or twitter or whatever the case and they kind of leave out the the they forget to share this on the google my business platform and google of course they own this platform they love when uh there's new unique content that's being shared on their platform so that's a big missed opportunity for a lot of business owners yeah, exactly. It's like Facebook, you know, they, they want to keep you on their platform and, you know, they charge more for Facebook ads that go uh, off site. Uh, they, they really want to keep you there as long as possible. And Google's doing the same thing um, with the Google My Business. Uh, I know a lot of research has been done on people not even getting to the business website anymore. They're making decisions uh, based solely on uh, what comes up in the Google My Business um, page when you click on it from, from the maps. Uh, they're looking at reviews. Uh, they're looking at the posts that you might make. They, they're looking at the offers. They can even look at menus uh, now within the Google My Business platform. So there aren't as many people even clicking through to the website anymore. So... The question in my mind becomes, 
you know, how do I get my business to show up or, or in the three pack, um, you know, even more so than, you know, down below in an organic results section? Sure. I mean, you know, like, as I mentioned, one of the most important aspects is making sure that you're utilizing their platform. Uh, like you said, they want to keep it all. They want to keep all of that. Um, they want to keep users within their own platform. Obviously, they don't want them going to uh, Yahoo and using that as a search engine or DuckDuckGo or Bing or whatever the case. So they want to keep you within their platform. Um, a way, a few different ways that business owners are able to ensure that they're able to be shown in that map section. Number one, you know, you need high quality backlinks going into your site. That's still a very important aspect in 2019 and going into 2020. Um, it's going to continue to be, that doesn't mean that will be the case forever, but certainly at this point, it's still very important. Uh, Google's also looking at mobile usability. So, uh, is your is your is your site not just mobile friendly? They actually want to know that the elements within the website show up properly. So they want to know that they're going to be providing a good uh, experience to their customer if they decide to show your business and to that customer. Um, other ways are, are making sure that that you have you know as many five star reviews as possible, and then on also responding to those reviews. Um, Google loves to see responses to their reviews. They continue to make that more and more of a priority for business owners. They make it easier and easier for business owners to respond to those reviews. Uh, making sure that your information across the web uh, is uniform. Uh, what you don't want to happen is uh, you go to one directory, for instance, Yelp, and there's a different phone number or business address than what Google Maps is actually showing. So Google will ding you for that. Um, you know, and then of course location is it plays a big part of it too. How 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 close, how near, how close was that search conducted from your place of business? Um, mm -hmm. But that's not the most important thing. And I think a lot of business owners have it in their in their in their head that that is the most important thing and nothing else can be done. That's just not the case. Uh, taking kind of a broad approach to this and, and, and making sure that you kind of check off all those boxes, you're going to end up start showing up in the, in the map pack. Right. Um, a, a couple of things here with regards to reviews, um, using your keywords in the reviews, uh, is something that you can do if obviously if, uh, people are leaving you reviews, you can, Ask them to include the keywords. Can you leave a review and mention uh, maybe our business name and the main keyword? Uh, that is something that's going to help. But like you said, responding to re the reviews gives you as a business owner a chance to include some of those keywords in uh, your review profile as well. And that does help in the algorithm to you know, get your business to show for, say, something like uh, best garage door uh, r repair in Denver. You know, if you can respond to one of those uh, reviews in your, your own words, you can definitely use uh, some of those keywords. Yep, absolutely. Uh, another thing, uh, you know, I just saw an article from, I think it was Search Engine Lands uh, recently uh, showing the correlation between the amount of images that you have on your Google My Business profile uh, to the number of calls that you actually get. And, you know, it, it was a huge, <laughs> huge uh, correlation between uh, businesses that had over 100 images on their uh, Google My Business page they're getting like 520% more calls uh, than average than a normal business would. So that is something that you can do, um, especially if you are going to a job site or you can take pictures of your work. Um, you know, this is great for service area businesses where they, they go out, they do a job, you know, they can take some pictures of it. Uh, 
uh, and they can put it up in their Google My Business page. So yeah, that yeah. is uh, something that can definitely be done. Uh, what other factors uh, do you need to consider when uh, trying to get a business to rank on the map? Well, yeah, I mean, you're you're exactly right. The the having images. And again, that it, that's that all kind of circles back to Google wanting to provide the best user experience uh, every time that someone you know ma- makes a search. So if if it's if it comes down to two companies that have the exact same amount of reviews, they have the exact same amount of backlinks, and the location was searched, and they're in the same plaza, for instance, who does Google decide to you know to 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 rank in the number one position on the maps versus number two? And it's going to be those small factors like the fact that uh, you have, you know, 20 or 30 or 100 pictures uh, that, that are showing up there. And then also labeled correctly. Um, Google loves to see this type of stuff. Um, same thing with, you know, with YouTube. The fact that uh, they own YouTube, uh, the, the platform, the video platform, uh, it's important to utilize uh, that platform. It's important to... Uh, to, to create uh, to, to create videos, especially, you know, I have a painting client that we're, we're, we're building a big YouTube channel for. Google loves when you play within their ecosystem. Um, and they also, you know, it all circles back to wanting to provide the best possible uh, results for whatever search. Uh, and, and if you think about it, providing images, having five-star reviews, having content that's pushed out on the Google My Business section. You can actually text message business owners now straight from the map section. Um, That's a new feature. A lot of business owners uh, have kind of not really jumped on board there, uh, and and I I have no idea why. It's a a very beneficial uh, program that that Google just recently rolled out. So um, Mm. if if you consistently think, you know, the way that we look at, at, at the algorithm that is Google um, you know, and that's essentially as far as their search program, that's what it is, is it's, it's one big algorithm with over a million different things within that, you know, within the algorithm. Uh, at the end of the day, what you want to think is, is this going to benefit the customers of Google? Is this what someone wants to see when we make a search? Do we want to, if we ha- ask a question, um, you know, if a consumer asks a question, they want the answer to show up right there on the front page of Google above the fold. So using things like schema markup and answering questions within your website as a business owner can be very powerful um, because of course, uh, you know, the customer, will, the consumer will, will ask a question in the top sections, there'll be a little drop down arrows that will answer the question. And then of course, a link to the website where that question was answered. Uh, and that generates a significant amount of traffic. but. Uh, you know, keeping with the local theme here, um, I would say just, you know, utilize Google services uh, as much as possible. Make sure that you're, you're sharing information, not just on Facebook and uh, Instagram, but also uh, the Google My Business platform. And, and, you know, once a month as a business owner, it's best practice to kind of just check in, you know, just log into your Google My Business page and see what updates have been uh, you know, uh, see, see what the most recent updates are because it's changing constantly and it's going to continue to continue to do that. Right. Uh, and I think what you're talking about there is, you know, you've got to give Google what they want. And I think mm-hmm. one of the ways that you get found on the map is by proving to Google on your website that everything that you say on your Google My Business page can be backed up with that kind of content on your website. So, um, you know, one thing that can make a huge difference uh, being found on the map is if you pick the right category for your business. So, you know, I've got a lot of experience in the the house cleaning and commercial cleaning uh, business Uh, I have a business here in Atlanta that does that. Um, But there's lots of different categories that that kind of business could qualify for within Google My Business. So what you can do is, you you know, cleaning services is a broad category, and that might cover everything. 
but Google is now trying to get a, a little more specific. So they want to know if you're house cleaning, if you're commercial cleaning, if you have uh, you know, maid services, or if you do gutter cleaning or pressure washing. And all those options are available within the Google My Business uh, categories. But you have to then go back and prove uh, with your content marketing and your SEO that that is what your website is about. And those are the kinds of things that can trigger uh, that, uh, that map listing to come up. Yep. And another uh, you know, opportunity that you have would be when you choose your main category, you can choose subcategories. And then also the services section of, the, of Google My Business um, that's an area where I see kind of uh, quite a few business owners may just overlook. They don't necessarily add each service. Um, and then also importantly, a, a description to each service. So that also is going to alert Google that, Hey, this, this garage door repair company also does new garage door installation, or they also work with garage door springs. Um, you know, something along those lines. So, um, it's important to make sure that the profile is completely, uh, you know, filled out and and um, explained well. And, and you want to make sure that you include in the services section every single service that you do, so you do have the opportunity to to, to show up in the map section when that service is searched in your local area. Exactly. All right. So I, I want to move this conversation over a little bit to a word which I think is going to be extremely important in 2020. It already is now. It's a word that uh, keeps coming up over and over again with anything that I uh, look at concerning ranking, and that is branding. Uh, branding really just means getting your business name out there in as many places as possible. Uh, what are some ways that businesses can help brand themselves by getting their name out there across the web? Sure. So, you know, I think branding is actually becoming more and more important. Um, it, it, we used to, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we would look in the phone book um, for garage door repair companies. And, you know, it's all alphabetical. Uh, there's not a whole lot that differentiates these 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 companies other than, you know, the name of the company. Literally, that was it. Now, you know, in 2019 and 2020, uh, branding is is more important than ever. And and one way that you can confirm this is you just look at all the social media influencers out there helping brand these companies. Um, some some important ways, you know, to 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 brand yourself as a small business. I, I would say number one is consistency. Um, these brand to in order to build a brand, you have to maintain consistency across the brand. Whether that's you know, making sure that all of your information, your logo, your color scheme, your, your company mantra um, it, it is the same across the web. The last thing that you want to see is a logo from, you know, five years ago showing up in, in places that customers are actually looking for. So developing a strong, um, a why, right? They, the, when it comes to branding, a lot of a lot of companies will talk about the why. Why is it that you're doing what you're doing? What what separates you from other companies? Um, and that's 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 where you have the opportunity. You know, when creating your brand, you have the opportunity to kind of explain the why um, or the how or the where or the when. But um, you know, making sure that you have a very strong logo, uh, making sure that your your color scheme is is consistent, um, making sure that uh, you're, you're able to be found in the places that your customers are actively searching for, um, and, and telling your story. You know, that's a big part of, of marketing and advertising uh, in 2019 uh, and beyond is, is, is having a reason why and then being able to ex explain that uh, to, to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, I just finished uh, rereading uh, Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, which is, you know, one of the most popular business books out there. And it's interesting to see how Google is really moving to uh, a lot of these things. Like you were saying, um, consistency is one of those weapons of influence that he talks about, but also social proof. 
social proof that you look at the reviews and the reputation of a business, uh, what other people are saying about that business is the social proof. Uh, then you've got the whole liking factor, which is uh, the social signals. You know, if people are giving your business social signals and thumbs up and likes and hearts or whatever else you can do on, on Facebook these days, that is now a, a ranking factor uh, for your business showing up. And then, of course, uh, authority is something else. That's, you know, very much uh, what I get into and what I do is, you know, positioning a business as an authority and putting your brand out there to be positioned as that authority. So it really is uh, interesting to see how, you know, Google is, they, they know what's working and they know what these weapons of influence are and uh, things are changing on their platform to give really the people uh, what they want and what they're asking for. So those things like consistency, social proof, liking and authority become really important uh, when, you are trying to rank. So how, how do you go about trying to include some of those things uh, into the local marketing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not just, uh, you know, putting a swoosh on a pair of sneakers and uh, selling them for a hundred bucks anymore. Um, it takes a little bit more than that. And, and kind of everything you just said kind of incorporates the consistency. Um, I think that's, you know, defining your brand and your purpose is extremely important. Uh, identity, you know, creating that brand identity is very important and then maintaining the consistency across the web, both physical and physically and digitally. Um, you know, consumers expect a product. If, if you're purchasing a product or a service, they expect to be able to purchase that same product or service in six months and receive the same product or service. They, they, they mm -hmm. need it to be consistent. And Google's looking at that. They're looking for those consistent brands, those consistent, you know, the consistent branding across the web. They're looking at your logo on uh, the different directories. They're looking to make sure that you have the same phone number. Um, they're looking at your slogan. You know, they're, they're reading these things and they're seeing these things and they're taking it into account when they decide who to put, um, you know, digitally, who, who to put on the front page. Definitely. Uh, the citations is a big one. You want to make sure that the information is the same across the web. Again, uh, another big ranking factor. Uh, you know, one of the things that I love to do is interview people like you, Adam, that have a knowledge about uh, this area and local marketing. That's a great way to get content. Um, you know, I offer that to uh, people listening here as well. If they uh, want to get content about their business and they want to uh, contact me, they can contact me at neil at theauthorityarchitect.com. Uh, That's my email, or you can go to theauthorityarchitect.com as well. And, uh, you know, we can get uh, an interview started and show you how to use that to the, the best of its ability. Adam, uh, we've talked a lot about uh, local marketing, and there's so much more to cover. We could talk about this all day, but probably best is if somebody wants to reach out to you and have that conversation for their own unique business, uh, what is the best way for them to do that? Sure. And yeah, it's always always a pleasure speaking with you, Neil. Um, so, you know, you can visit us at mydenverdigital.com. Um, you can give us a call at 720-909-3368. Um, or you can email me directly um, at adam at denverdigital.com. Uh, and we'd love to, you know, sit down and uh, kind of have that discussion with any local business owners, um, both locally and nationally. Uh, we do work with national brands uh, around the country as well. So, uh, but again, always, always a pleasure speaking with you. And hopefully we were able to add a little value here today. Definitely. Uh, we need to remember that there's only so much space on the search and results page, which only means that uh, only certain businesses are going to get on there. So it is really important to stay on top of things and uh, work with somebody who is 
on top of their game. And Adam, you certainly do that. I know you do some great work in the, around the Denver area and across the country for your clients. So uh, thank you very much for being my guest today on the Trust Factor Radio. Thank you, Neil. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com. 